from the soaring mountain peaks of the Himalayas to the rocky seas of Mardan, diversity shines through and through Pakistan. This land of 220 million people is the birthplace of ancient civilizations that have profoundly shaped our history. Its fertile and inviting lands are the primary reason Pakistan is an ever-evolving melting pot of cultures and languages, where Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Jews, Christians, and Sikhs live harmoniously. Pakistan has a very, very long history, one of the longest perhaps in the world. And as such, uh, it is a great diversity in all its uh, cultural, historical, and heritage matters. The sheer diversity of the country is directly attributed to its highly strategic location. The countless resources, the fruitful landscapes, and one of the most important trade routes of all time. The Silk Road have all made Pakistan a hotly contested seat of power for thousands of years. It is this mix of cultures over millennia that has made Pakistan a highly tolerant and accepting country where all religions and races are treated equally under the law and is the founding principles of the country. Ustad Juman, a retired teacher from Sindh, is part of a thriving Buddhist community. For him, Pakistan was his land long before gaining independence. Where I have come from, we have not come from migrating from anywhere. The father and father have told us that they are here. They are the real people. We are not from any other countries or other countries. We are the real people. 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 It all started in the Kachi Plains of Balochistan around 9,000 years ago with the Neolithic Mehergird civilization, considered to be one of the earliest settlements to have ever existed. The people of Mehergird were primarily farmers and herders who lived in mud brick houses, used granaries, and had a certain flair for crafts. The civilization was probably the earliest known center of agriculture in South Asia and laid the foundation for a spectacular future. In around 2600 BCE, climate change caused the land to become increasingly arid, forcing the people of Mehetgird to abandon their lands and move to the fertile Indus Valley, where another civilization was in the early stages of development. If Mahetgird was the foundation for the subcontinent, the Indus Valley Civilization was its heart. Based on the evergreen river Indus and older than the ancient Egyptian, Mayan and Chinese civilization, the Indus Valley at its peak held approximately 5 million people, stretching from the Arabian Sea to southern Afghanistan. Its major cities such as Harappa, Mahenjadoro, and Ganidivala were distinguished by their roadside drainage system, multi-storied houses and brick construction. The cities were also well planned with step wells, dentists and municipal organization, as well as an underground sewage system. This was a society that was scientifically and artistically far ahead of the curve, showing immense talent in arts, craft and trade, literature and mathematics with no traces of warfare or violence throughout its duration. The civilization collapsed in 1700 to 1900 BCE due to either floods or wars, but its impact on the subcontinent cannot be underestimated. The river Indus or the river Sindh is going to go through the whole of Pakistan. The 
इस रिवर इंडस की वजह से इंडिया का नाम पड़ा है यानी इस इंडस रिवर ने इंडिया को नाम दिया ये वो लैंड है जिसको पूरी दुनिया में इंडिया कहा गया ये असल में आज का पाकिस्तान है क्योंकि यहाँ से इंडस गुजरा अब इसका मतलब क्या हुआ मतलब ये है कि जो इंडिया के पूरे सब कॉन्टिनेंट की हम बात करते हैं तो सारी डेवलपमेंट या कल्चर डेवलपमेंट या कोई फिलासफिकल डेवलपमेंट वहाँ नहीं हुई ये ज़्यादातर इस पाकिस्तान के सॉइल पे हुई जो कि आजकल पाकिस्तान है It is the Gandharan civilization however that has left the most lasting mark on Pakistan as well as the world. With a global reach that stretched as far as Japan and Central Asia, Gandhara is the land responsible for spreading Buddhism throughout Asia. The story of Buddhism in Gandhara started thousands of miles away over 2500 years ago. When the 29-year-old prince Siddhartha Gautama wandered outside his palace for the first time. Up until that point, his father had opted to protect his son from the realities of life and ensured Siddhartha stayed inside a palace in the ancient city of Kapilavastu. When the prince finally left his palace after decades of luxury, the real world hit him hard. Death, disease and corruption all greeted the prince, who could almost not comprehend what he was witnessing. This would be one of the most important moments throughout history, which led him on a 6-year journey after which he became Buddha or the enlightened one. The rest of his life was spent teaching others how to achieve this spiritual state. After Buddha's death in around 483 BC, his followers started organizing a religious movement to spread the teachings of Buddha. This movement was not easy, and after facing several challenges, Buddhism was on the verge of extinction. That is until the 3rd century BC, when the Mauryan Indian emperor Ashoka the Great who gave up his violent ways to embrace Buddhism would revive the almost forgotten religion After King Ashoka's efforts Buddhism was constantly on the rise in the subcontinent and its surroundings Its spread in the rest of the world was quite slow though until a Buddhist monk Marananta born in the region of Gandhara would change history forever. Pakistan and Korea have uh, a, a long history of relations. Uh, this relationship uh, has roots in the uh, travel of monk Marananta in the 4th century uh, from today's Pakistan. to uh, korea uh, he arrived at the port of bopsanpo and uh, then he introduced buddhism uh, to uh, the korean peninsula and uh, from there uh, buddhism spread through, throughout korea and uh, to japan and rest of east asia uh, the uh, uh, this link has endured over centuries ganhara the birthplace of marananta is the ancient name of a region that dates back to the stone age and whose area spread from the Kabul river in Afghanistan to Taxila in Pakistan located on the infamous silk road the region was prosperous and culturally rich and played a vital role for centuries being influenced by massive empires gandhara civilization uh, as we understand uh, is 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 very diverse i mean it's not just one uh, cultural block i mean there are as we understand that this kingdom of kandhara first came to historical records uh, as a part of uh, you know parthian empire it was one of the provinces one of the mahajanpadas and uh, 
you know, and then as we know when Alexander, uh, after, uh, after the Alexander campaign, uh, Greeks ha culture began to infiltrate here and uh, it did not create that sort of a dynastic succession but it did inject a lot of uh, uh, you know sort of a cultural aesthetic uh, influence uh, on the local population as for how buddhism came to the region most of the credit goes to one person started his missionary activities in Buddhism. So along with these uh, caravans, long distance caravans, uh, the missionaries also started coming and established them. Uh, fortunately, more than any other piece of land in between Bihar and Pakistan, it was this Taxra and then the, uh, some parts of uh, uh, NWFP at that time, which attracted Dinesh attention or received them well and responded and that is how Buddhism finally got established in Pakistan. It would be these missionaries who would change the history of Gandhara forever. And whilst Buddhism might be a striking aspect of the civilization, Gandhara in no way could be assigned to a single religion or caste. it called the Indus Valley Civilization. So it is a later period civilization, but in terms of its global renown, it is probably one of the best that we have here. A Gandhara civilization is called civilization because it is, uh, it is a combination of so many cultures. You know, Gandhara civilization is not just Indian civilization. Right? Gandhara civilization is almost sort of global civilization. Imagine from Parthians, from Greeks, you know, to the, you know, Mauryans and, you know, Kushans, you know, people from the Chinese origin, Mongols. So all of that have actually contributed to the making of what, uh, you know, Gandhara civilization is all about. If I think of, uh, you know, its contribution to the growth of Buddhism, not only that it helped spread, it also documented and writ write down the, uh, you know, the oral tradition of Buddha, right, as they were passed along. When these people were converted after Ashoka really patronized Buddhism in Gandhara. But if you think in historical terms, then Gandhara civilization was much bigger, uh, had a almost like a global impact, uh, had actually more diverse and had existed for a much longer time. Gandharan art is another gem that has emerged from Gandhara. Revered as a highly unique and ancient form throughout the world, it contains evidence of a culture that was as diverse as it was rich. जब हम बुद्धिस्ट टेक्स्ट की बात करते हैं, तो वहाँ पे बुद्धा के लिए कहा गया कि उसके बाल ऐसे होने चाहिए, उसके कान इतने लंबे होने चाहिए, उसकी जो चिन है वो किस तरह होनी चाहिए, नाक किस तरह होनी चाहिए, तो जब उस बुद्धिस्ट टेक्स्ट के मुताबिक उस फेस को बाकी बॉडी के जो जो फीचर्स हैं, उसमें एम्बॉडी किया गया, तो जाहिर बात है एक बिल्कुल नया स्टाइल वजूद में आया, तो मुख्तलिफ चीजें जब मिली, तो एक नया स्टाइल वजूद में आया, जिसको आप किसी आर्ट के साथ नहीं कह सकते कि उसकी तरह आर्ट है, लेकिन एक नया आर्ट है, लेकिन कई आर्ट्स का उसपे इंफ्लुएंस मौजूद है। Gandhara was a civilization that flourished for over a millennium, considering it stood the test of time and left a legacy that is almost unmatched, it begs a very simple question. This land of Gandhara, why it became so, uh, so eminent in history? Because it was located on the crossroads. It was the Silk Route Junction. You know, the, the Silk Route uh, network would actually flow through Gandhara. So that is why, and you know, the Silk Route was connecting Rome with China. It is the Texla who contributed to help develop Gandhara art and expand it because it was in the center of the trade route, basic meeting price from all international forces, whether it comes east 
whether it's from west, whether it's from north, whether it's from south and from seaside. The first, all these routes used to meet at Taxra. The legacy of Buddhism in Ganhara, as well as its distinctive art, is still widely present throughout Asia. Even though the heartland of the region was primarily located in Pakistan, the culture was so influential that it spread as far as China, Korea, and Japan. The heritage of the Ganhara region is so brilliant, in fact, that remnants will remain long, long after we are gone. And this magnificent region will live on in memory, mesmerizing those who come across it. Amongst the earliest account of the region is the travelogue by a Buddhist monk, Hecho, who set out in 723 AD from Korea in order to better acquaint himself with the language and culture of the land of Buddha. Hecho travels highlight key areas of the Gandaharan region, including Kashmir, Gilgit, Swat, and Chitral, and are currently kept at the National Library in Paris. The legacy of Buddhism runs deep through the heart of Pakistan. All across the country, evidence of an enlightened religion can be seen. Starting from the north, Shabazgari is a historic village in the Mardan district of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Shabazgari is the most famous site for where Ashoka established his one of the inscriptions, which was missionary message. Uh, about Buddhism and spread of Buddhism, basic principle. The so, inscription on the living rocks, the huge boulders that are covered in the middle of the day, on the top of the day, the inscription is. Staying in the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Taktavai, an Hindu Parthian archaeological site of an ancient Buddhist monastery can be found. The name Takhti Bayi means spring or water. One of the most, one of the most spectacular sites in the Buddhist monastery in entire Pakistan, especially in Gandhara and Taxla, is Takhti Bayi. It's the most spectacular site um, by dint of its location, by dint of its size, by dint of its uh, distribution of structure. Close to Mardan, the Butkara Stupa is located near Mingora in Swat. After being built, the stupa was enlarged on five separate occasions over the following centuries, each time built bigger and grander. The most iconic site of the stupa is the seated Buddha statue, which is amongst the earliest known iconography of Buddha in the Ganhara region. When I took a Buddhist friend to one of these Buddhist stupas and he went near that stupa, it was very difficult for me to pull him away from it because it became evening and we had to leave. So I asked my Buddhist friend, I said, what, is, why, what are you experiencing over here? And he said to me that our belief is that where there is a Buddhist stupa, the air and the atmosphere around that stupa actually is the soul of Lord Buddha himself. So he told me that you have actually delivered me to the Lord Buddha. So when you go to the soul of Lord Buddha, you have delivered me to him. Swat has dozens and dozens of stupas that, that are surrounded by the soul and the Ru of Buddha for which they will come from any distance. The ancient city of Taxila, which means city of the cut stone, 
is one of the most important archaeological sites in the subcontinent, situated 32 kilometers northwest of the capital Islamabad. The city acted as an integral junction between the subcontinent and Central Asia. Tekshila is the best introduction. You know why? The word Tekshila has been translated into, this name of the city has been translated into more than seven international languages. They were the ones because they belong to a highly literate tradition. One of the most, uh, you know, prestigious universities of the ancient world. And a whole of Northern India, kings of Magadha, you know, king of Banaras, king of Kashmir, or even in Europe, you know, from as far as Greece and Rome, scholars would come here to study. The very uh, founder of the Mauryan Empire, Chandragupta Maurya, was a student at Texla University for 17 years. So what we're saying is that not only that these places, you know, the group of colleges and institutions built up on monasteries and stupas, but not only just uh, imparting education of the Buddhist faith, the Dharma, but also like archery, they were also medicine, imparting knowledge of medicine, engineering, building construction, and not to forget these specimens of, you know, this Buddhist art or, or the Gandhara art that we see. They were taught at the universities by eminent artists. They were not just the artisanal job given the level of sophistication that we see today. After the trade routes connecting Central Asia and the subcontinent became irrelevant, the city was destroyed by the Huns. The Dharmarajaka Stupa, also known as the Great Stupa of Taxila, dates to as early as the 2nd century CE and was built to house small bone fragments of Buddha. This site is the first Taxila of Buddhist Talimi Darsga and Ibadatga, Dharmarajaka site. जो अशोका ने तामिर करवाई थी। एक मेन स्टूपा भी यहाँ से दरियाफ्त हुआ, जहाँ पर अभी भी बुद्धिस्ट लोग आते हैं और वर्शिप भी होती है यहाँ पर, क्योंकि बुद्धा के रैलेक्स यहाँ से फाउंड हुए थे, गोल्ड का रैलेक्स कास्केट मिला, जिसमें बुद्धा का जो टूथ था, पिज़्ज़ा भी था, वो यहाँ से फाउंड the stupa and monastery of Muramraru are strategically located in a valley surrounded by mountains. Muramuradu stupa is actually part of Muramuradu monastery. It is one of the most well-preserved, well-kept uh, monastery where they have kept the artifacts which were found there on the site. So it, it is one of those uh, few sites uh, in Texla and in Kandhara where the, uh, the artifacts are actually placed on the site because most of the artifacts were removed from the site and placed um, in the museum. The Julian Monastery, which translates to Seat of Saints, sits atop a hill in Haripur. The monastery was built around the same time as Moramuradu by the Kushans consisting of a main central stupa, 27 peripheral smaller stupas, as well as 59 small chapels with art enacting scenes from the life of Buddha, Julian is a sight to behold. The main stupa at Julian has faced extensive damage and is surrounded by 21 votive stupas with religious iconography. Julia is also associated uh, as a site of Texla University, but uh, there are no, uh, you know, physical remains that can establish that connection. The Bamala Stupa, a ruined Buddhist stupa, is also near the town of Horipur. The site is most famously known for a 1,700-year-old statue of Buddha attaining enlightenment, and is thought to be the first statue of the kind in the world. From Haripur, the trip of Buddhist heritage might lead one to the ancient city of Munjadoru, meaning Mound of the Dead Men. Built as far back as 2500 BCE during the height of the Indus Valley civilization, well before Gandhara was flourishing, it is one of the biggest settlements of the civilization. Surprisingly, there have also been many stupas and Buddhist sites found throughout Sindh.
by the time when uh, Buddhism in Gandhara was declining in 6th century, Buddhism in Sindh was flourishing. The Kushan dynasty was spread out to Sindh as well. And by the time uh, the trade declined and the Silk Route, uh, uh, the trade on the Silk Route declined, uh, you know, the Gandharan monasteries faces an immense threat because it was the traders who were supporting the monasteries. When traders were no longer traveling on the road, they were no longer supporting the monasteries with endowments, monasteries had a difficult time in surviving. Whereas in Sindh, the larger population of Buddhists in Sindh were traders and they were doing very well. So they were keeping up their monasteries and supporting the monks. Principally recognized as a dwelling place for the ancient Indus Valley civilization, there exists a prominent Buddhist stupa at Munjadaro. Munjadaro ke shayar ke bilkul sabse bade upar tile pe ek aap dekhenge to plan hame nazar aata hai ki ek platform hai mustatil sa rectangular platform hai. उसके ऊपर गोल स्ट्रक्चर है वो है स्टूपा का यानी स्टूपा जो गोल है वो खड़ा है एक प्लेटफार्म पे और उस प्लेटफार्म के चारों तरफ कमरे बने हुए हैं बुद्ध भक्षुओं के इनको हम कहते हैं मॉन्क सेल्स जिनमें बुद्ध भक्षु रहते थे मेडिटेशन करते थे और इस टेंपल का ख्याल करते थे उन कमरों के अंदर से हज़ारों की तादाद में कॉपर के सिक्के भी मिले हैं जो वासुदेवा बादशाह के जमाने के हैं और वो कुशान बादशाह था ठुलमी रुकण सिंह का एक बहुत ही ज़बरदस्त बुद्ध स्टूपा है और ये ज़िला नवाबशाह में वाक़ है और बहुत ही ज़बरदस्त स्ट्रक्चर है इसकी आप फ़न तमीर देखेंगे तो बिल्कुल ऐसे लगता है कि जैसे सवात मानसहरा और के पी के के बड़े बड़े स्टूपाज हों 90 परसेंट ये सारा आज तक महफूज है ये स्टूपा छठी सदी ईस्वी से पहले का हो या बाद का हो लेकिन ये इस्लाम से पहले का ज़बरदस्त स्ट्रक्चर है थ्रू आउट पाकिस्तान काउंटलेस बुद्धिस्ट साइट्स कैन बी फाउंड एंड वाइल ट्रैवलिंग टू ऑल दीज साइट्स कैन सीम ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल म्यूजियम्स हाउस द हिस्ट्री ऑफ बोथ द गंडहारन सिविलाइजेशन एंड द बुद्धिस्ट कल्चर हमारे म्यूज़ियम्स हैं उसमें तो तारीख़ जो है वो शुरू होती है 22 लाख साल पीछे से यानी कि वहाँ से लेकर अभी जो मुस्लिम हमारा दौर है यहाँ तक की जो नवादरात मौजूद है The Museum Lahore opened in 1894 and is most well known for its collection of Buddhist art and artifacts from the Indo-Greek and Gandharan kingdoms. as well as collections from the Indus Valley Civilization, Mughal Empire, and the British Empire. Having the artifacts related to every civilization, every dynasty, every religion of this area of the subcontinent. When the major excavations were made in the area of Gandhara during early 19th centuries, Lahore Museum till then was serving as a main museum of subcontinent. So whatever they got from the excava excavations, whatever they got from the surface, from any far away regions of this country, they directly sent to the Lahore Museum. Our Gandhara collection is important because we have the complete chronological order of Gandhara collection. Apart from Sarawasti and Sikri Stupa, the fasting Buddha statue attracts tourists from far and wide. and is one of the main attractions in the Lahore Museum. Its rarity as well as sophistication have immortalized this statue. Kuch Hindus jo hai wo ghar chhod ke wo jaate hain aur jangalon mein jaakar wo baqayda sanyas karte hain ya faqir ban jaate hain malang ban jaate hain. Buddha ne bhi isi tarah un Hindu philosophy ko follow karte hue usne baqayda ek fasting ki aur इतनी फास्टिंग की यानी खाना कम करते करते यह ये कहा जाता है कि एक चावल के दाने खाने पे आ गया था वो तो उस स्टेज में जब वो पहुंचा तो उस 
उस स्टेज को जिसमें उसके बाकायदा रिब्स जो है नज़र आ गई और वो जो वेन्स हैं वो बाकायदा नज़र आ रही हैं बुद्धा ने उस स्टेज को निगेट किया उसने कहा कि ये जो तरीका है सेल्फ मोटिफिकेशन का जो तरीका है ये गलत है उस इनलाइटनमेंट को सच्चाई को ढूंढ रहा हूँ ताकि मैं बाकी इंसानों को प्रीच करूँ कि आपके निजात का रास्ता क्या है तो मैं अगर खाना छोड़कर मर जाऊँगा तो ये तो मेरा मसला तो हल नहीं होगा जो मैं लोगों को बताना चाह रहा हूँ और फिर उसने कहा काना शुरू किया और फिर उसने सोचना शुरू किया और फिर आ, आ, उस हालत में फिर उसको वो इनलाइटनमेंट मिली और उसने उसकी प्रीचिंग शुरू की Similarly, the museum found in the city of Taxila is a marvel to behold. The ancient city should by now need no introduction, and some of its majestic history has been preserved in the museum. Taxila Museum jo hai ye 1928 mein establish hua. John Marshall was the pioneer. He was the founder of this museum. To 1913 mein आ, उसने ये एक्सक्वेशन शुरू की यहाँ पे गंदारा रीजन में टैक्सला के एरिया में अ फ्यू आवर्स अवे फ्रॉम टैक्सला द बिगेस्ट कलेक्शन ऑफ गैनहार एंड आर्ट इज लोकेटेड इन साइड द पीशोवेर म्यूजियम फाउंडेड इन 1907 गंदारा आर्ट के जो नवादरात है पूरी दुनिया में आप जिस भी म्यूजियम में जाते हैं जिस भी कल्चर सेक्टर में जाते हैं तो वहाँ पर आपको गंदारा के नवादरात मिलते हैं लेकिन पिशावरी म्यूजियम इसका हब है इसका सेंटर है जितनी भी नवादरात अगर वो दूसरे म्यूजियम्स में है दूसरे मुल्कों में भी है वो यहाँ से लोन पर गए हैं या प्री पार्टीशन एरा में अंग्रेज़ यहाँ से लेकर गए हैं बेसिकली वो ताल्लुक़ रखते हैं इस खत्े से गंदारा से और इस पिशावर म्यूज़ियम से तो इसमें से तकरीबन हमारे पास तीस हज़ार के करीब नवादरात है तो ये दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा म्यूज़ियम है इन टर्म फॉर गंदारा पीसेस जो है गंदारा नवादरात के है इसमें से जो मेन हाल है तो वहाँ पर हमने जो बुद्ध की लाइफ स्टोरी है उसको हमने एक सीक्वेंस में रखा हुआ है यानी जिस तरह उसकी प्री बर्थ स्टोरीज है जिसको हम अपनी ज़ुबान में जित का स्टोरीज कहते हैं तो हमारे पास ये सेवेंटी फोर टोटल उसकी स्टोरीज है जो हमारे पास है जो दुनिया के किसी म्यूजियम में भी नहीं है तो इसके अलावा जो उसके बॉडी के मुकम्मल जो ह्यूमन फार्म में जो है ह्यूमन स्टेचू जो है वो यहाँ पर है उसे बड़े बड़े मुजस्मे भी है सीटेड फार्म में भी है स्टैंडिंग फार्म में भी है और उसके मुख्तलिफ़ गेस्चर्स होते हैं अलामत होते हैं इशारे होते हैं जिसे हम ये पता लगाते हैं कि इस वक्त ये किस पोजीशन में है या क्या कर रहा है जिसमें अबाया मुद्रा है और बहुत सारे हैं जिसमें से वो मुख्तलि इशारे करते हैं जिसे हम उसकी तशरी करते हैं तो वो यहाँ पर चारों फार्म में यहाँ पर है इसके अलावा बुद्धा के अलावा बुद्धिसत्वा के मुजस्मे है बुद्धिसत्वा मीन द पर्सन वो आर ट्राइंग टू बिकम बुद्धा यानी अभी वो इस कोशिश में है कि वो बुद्धा बन जाए तो वो यहाँ हमारे पास तकरीबन जितने भी बड़े बड़े जो बुद्धिसत्वा गुजरे हैं वो यहाँ पर उसके मुजस्मे है The influence of Gandhara reached far and wide, so much so that most of Asia can thank the Gandharans for introducing or strengthening their faith when it comes to Buddhism. For example, the spread of Buddhism to China and Tibet was in large part due to Gandhara and the Silk Road. Buddhist monks would accompany merchant caravans traveling on the Silk Road, preaching their religion along the way. and frontier region particularly peshawar and char sada area they have facilitated in making buddhism an international religion because it was the idea the practices its explanatory role or its jo benefits and jo bhi hai uh, they moved it to the west and northwest there were so many other uh, type of merchandise that became part of this expanding silk route trade which passed through here and remember when 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 you know on the karma not only travelers passed through idea also cross sect you know the, the meeting of minds not only the conquerors take their road to uh, conquer but the preacher also come along trader also come along so i think location of gandhara at the junction of the silk route really made it Uh, a very significant part of global history however the true degree of gandharan civilization's impact on the region became apparent during the kushan rule it all started with a highly important kushan ruler kanishk whose reign lasted almost 30 years from 144 to 172 ad 
ये वो डायनेस्टी है जिन्होंने गंधारा को सेंटर बनाया यहाँ से एम्पायर शुरू की और ये एम्पायर इतनी बड़ी कि इंडिया के सेंटर तक चली गई ऊपर जो है सेंट्रल एशिया तक चली गई उजबकिस्तान के इलाकों में वहाँ पे इनके ट्रेसेस हैं और अफगानिस्तान तक फैले हुए तो ये एक बहुत डायनेस्टी थी कि जहाँ से बाकायदा एक बुद्धिज़म फ्लरिश होना शुरू हुआ और एक डायनेस्टी ने बाकायदा एक बुद्धिस्ट डायनेस्टी ने हुकूमत की और इसीलिए बुद्धिज़म हम कहते हैं कि गंदारा का एक अहम रिलीजन बना Buddhism would be introduced to Korea thanks to the works of the legendary Maranantra. Born in Gandhara, he was key to the spread of Buddhism in Korea, where it was adopted as state religion of three constituent policies during the period of the Three Kingdoms. It was welcomed by followers of shamanism and eventually blended into their religion. Similarly, Buddhism also spread to Japan through China and Korea. Through the Silk Road. When I arrived here, I found the Pakistan is a country full of a variety of the uh, culture and religion. That would be the uh, great source for tourism. Also. I visited several Buddhist heritage sites, very rich and very good uh, heritage there for the uh, foreign tourists. Apart from the people of Pakistan, it is the country's past that speaks most to Ustad Juman. Thanks to tales from his father and grandfather, as well as a deep connection to his religion, Taxila is one city that fascinates him most. जी हम गंधारा फेस्टिवल के लिए जाने के लिए तो बहुत समझो उतावले हैं कि कब वो दिन आए। ये एक तरह से हमारी ऐसे ज़ियारत है। और ये हम खुशमत किस्मत समझते हैं खुद को कि भाई ये ऐसी ज़ियारत मुकदस ज़ियारत हैं वो हमें देखने को मिलेंगी Taxila was the site for the Ganhara festival by the Center for Culture and Development it featured exhibitions storytelling sessions and panel discussions as well as posters and pictures of Buddhism remains and heritage sites throughout Pakistan for Ustad Juman, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity he refused to pass up on, traveling across Pakistan to reach his destination. In the train, there was a problem with the train, but the desire of our own place to see the places of our own place, it was not a problem with our own place. It was a very good trip here. We got to see the old civilization here. और बेसिकली इस बुद्ध मत के हवाले से मैं खुद बुद्ध मत से हूँ तो यहाँ की जो आसार हैं जो कदीम आसार हैं हमारे बुद्ध मत से मुतालिक हैं इनको देखकर बहुत एक्साइटेड हुए बहुत अच्छा लगा और ज़िंदगी में पहली मर्तबा धर्माराजी का का स्टूपा देखा और धर्माराज्य का जो स्टूपा है इसका जो ताल्लुक है हमारी रूहानियत से और बुद्धमत से तो ये हमारा मुतबरक तीर्थ स्थान है जैसे एक हज की तरह जैसे ज़ियारत होती है उस तरह की हमें ये ज़ियारत मालिक ने नसीब की यादें तो हमारी बस शुरू हुई हैं यहाँ की जो मुतबरक अशिया हैं हमारे मजहबी हवाले से तो ये हम अपने दिलों में साथ लेकर जा रहे हैं और जो बाकी हमारे कम्युनिटी के लोग हैं अगर वो देख नहीं पाएंगे तो हम उनको बता जरूर पाएंगे Every Buddhist site in Pakistan is as awe-inspiring as the last and makes one revel in the chronicles of humanity both learning and building upon it Without the Ganharan civilization, the world we know would have been considerably different for the worse. And it is a shame that the civilization doesn't get the recognition it deserves in the eyes of the world. For Pakistan, however, the Ganhara will forever be an iconic region, one that contributed to the development of an iconic culture with mesmerizing art, tolerant people, and a heritage that words perhaps cannot do justice. Quite, it's a surprise for us uh, to see uh, such 
ancient uh, civilization. Uh, we are here in a place. Uh, there, there was here a bursting city uh, during 700 years. Of course, your culture is much more ancient and much more interesting than European, North European or Middle Central European culture. Ancient civilizations or religious and cultural diversity are unfortunately not the first words that come to mind when thinking of Pakistan, even though the nation has played a major role in shaping the history of the world for thousands of years. Its land has hosted some of the greatest civilizations ever, without whom Buddhism, agriculture, and the meaning of education would not be the same. Few countries can boast a legacy as rich and fascinating as Pakistan, and it is this legacy that is reflected in citizens of Pakistan through their religions, their languages, their attires, and of course, their diverse ancestral backgrounds.